Hey, this is uh, Pastor Terrence right here tonight. Um, our broadcast is sponsored by our ministry, Better Life Christian Center. And we hope and trust you're having a good evening. As we are nearing the end of March, and this is what we considered the uh, Holy Week, the week of uh, leading up to Jesus, uh, our Savior, resurrection, um, leading up to his suffering and his being crucified and resurrected. Um, and uh, as we are going to celebrate that this weekend, and um, we hope you're having a, a great evening. And um, so we thank and praise God for the opportunity always to come and to minister the word of the Lord tonight. Amen. Hey there, Sister Sophia. All right. And um, we have um, a couple of people on. We're hopefully, we're going to wait until we have a few more people to go ahead and get into our announcements and to pray. And um, we are always excited to bring the word of the Lord to you this evening. Um, and so we are going to uh, wait for a couple more people before we share our announcements. Hey there, Sister Tisha. Amen. And I um, um, want to um, give a shout out to uh, Jeffrey Pryor. Uh, Jeff, um, who uh, him and his family is in our ministry, and he was uh, praying and believing God for a job. And uh, he was telling me about it this week. And he texted me and let me know that they offered him the job. So he has a brand new job and he's a chef, a cook, and um, they offered him the job after he showed them what he could do. And so I told him, I said, to God be the glory. And he said, for sure. And um, I want to give um, Brother Jeff a shout out that God um, can truly move when you pray and you put your trust in him. I mean, um, and he can um, open up doors that uh, no man can close and he can shut doors, glory to God, that no man can open. So um, um, we understand the, uh, you know, how the Lord works and um, opening those doors up. Um, so we thank God for Brother Jeff's testimony this, this evening. So we thank the Lord for that. Hey, we got a few people coming on tonight and we want to go ahead and get into our announcements. And we um, it's our custom that we celebrate the whole entire month of individuals who are members and partners of our ministry uh, celebrating their birthdays. And um, <laughs> I heard somebody say today that they don't celebrate birthdays. They make it like an anniversary. And I think, I mean, you know, to each his own, everybody has their own uh, viewpoint. But, you know, I really think that that isn't um, healthy because there's nothing wrong with getting older. I just, there's nothing wrong with it. And matter of fact, it's a benefit because, um, <clears throat> you know, there are many people who have left the planet um, at a young age. And um, I I celebrate the fact that each year I can see another another year. Mm. It's an awesome thing because, um, unfortunately, my own father, who I love dearly, my father, who um, passed away uh, due to uh, health complications, died at 49. And so, listen, I think that it's awesome when you can get to be the age of 40, the age of 50, the age of 60, the age of 70. And especially if you have your health, you know, at the age of 80, the age of 90, um, I think that's an awesome thing. So listen, we celebrate Deacon Tiff's her birthday. Um, we thank God for her the whole month. We told her this is her whole month and we just wanted to love on her and, um, and just tell her how much we love her and thank God for her. And she is truly a pillar, a pillar of Better Life Christian Center. And um, um, and she's my sister, and I thank God for her. Um, I thank God for her, me and my wife. Thank God for Deacon Tiff and her husband, Elder Call. So we just praise God for them. Um, we are this Friday. This Friday is Good Friday, and um, 
last Friday we were going to have prayer, but we decided to have it on this Friday because it being Good Friday. And um, we're going to be having prayer. Um, and we may even put it online. I'm not sure yet that you that are on can't come to our location can be a part of our prayer time. Um, and we're going to have prayer from starting at seven o'clock, typically to eight. We're going to take communion and just uh, commemorating and recognizing um, what Jesus did for us at Calvary. And um, and he, you know, we say he got up, but if he didn't go down, he couldn't get up. Amen. <laughs> so we thank and praise God for the Lord Jesus Christ's obedience. And um, we're going to celebrate that this uh, coming um, um, Friday uh, through our prayer and our communion. So be if you would love to come out, we would love to have you. Um, 587 Bethlehem Pike. It's in Suite 100. It's in Montgomeryville, PA. It's right outside of Philadelphia, um, in the Philadelphia area. Come on out, be a part of the prayer time at 7 p.m. And we're gonna have a great time in the Lord this Friday. All right, um, Sunday morning, um, which we know is to be Easter, but as believers, we call it resurrection service. That's right, our resurrection service, which is March 31st. Um, come on out, be a part of that at 10 a.m. We're going to have a great time. We're going to have um, none other than our own sister Tracy Lee is going to be dancing. I'm telling you, she is truly anointed of the Lord, and um, um, she's ready to get back to dancing. I tell you, <laughs> sister Tracy is her and her husband Gerald has been blessed with three beautiful children. And during that time, she really wasn't been able to dance. And she said, the pastor is done. I'm not having no more babies. I got enough. <laughs> so she said, it's time to get back into ministry. And she truly has an awesome dance ministry. You want to come out, you're going to be blessed. I'm trying to tell you, every time Sister Tracy dance, it is anointed the presence of the Lord. I'm looking forward to it. And um, we are going to have communion. Hey, you know, there's going to be a word in the house. There's always a word in the house. And um, and then we have something for our children. And um, we're going to be having something after service for the kids and even for the adults. That's right, for both. So come on out and celebrate with us uh, on Easter for our resurrection service at 10 a.m. And again, it's at our location at 587 Bethlehem Pike, Suite 100, Montgomeryville, PA. Hey, listen, if you need any more instructions or directions or information, give us a call at 267. That's right, 267 uh, 446 uh, 1446. 267 446 1446. All right. And so come on out and have a great time with us. Hey, we just want to get you ready. Get you ready. We have another year uh, anniversary of uh, for Pastor, myself, and the church. We're going to be celebrating our anniversary April the 28th. That's the last weekend, that Sunday. We're going to be celebrating um, the church and the pastor and my aunt and, you know, as the pastor. And um, we're going to be letting you know, hopefully, in a week or two, um, who our special guest preachers are going to be coming and ministering to us and, and so forth. So uh, mark that our church anniversary, Better Life Christian Center and pastoral anniversary is the last weekend in the month of April the 28th. Please put that in your calendar, write it down. We're going to be having a great time in the Lord. Amen. Um, we always encourage people, excuse me, to send your prayer requests um, because we believe, like Jesus said, his house, and this is Jesus' house, is a house of prayer. And we encourage you to send us your prayer requests. Some of you, you do. And um, send us a prayer request to our email address to um, Better Life Philly, mm, Better Life Philly at gmail.com, Better Life Philly at gmail.com. Send us your um, uh, prayer request to our email address. Um, also, if you sent us an email, um, a prayer request, and I'll tell you, you've seen God move in it. 
let us know. Email us back and say, Pastor, a year ago, we asked you to pray for healing for such and such. Uh, man of God, you know, you, the, we asked the church to pray um, for a family situation. God moved in that situation. So let us know what God has done for you. Um, and um, if you sent us a prayer request, but if you haven't, you can send us to our email, betterlifephilly at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you so we can put your prayer request on our prayer petition because we bring it before the Lord on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday mornings at 6 a.m. All right. Well, beloved, those are our announcements and our events that we have coming up. Um, so we um, are hopefully you heard and received and put your calendar together and so forth. And now, and now we're getting ready to go into the word of the Lord. Let's pray and, and um, hear from the Lord so that God can speak to us tonight. All right. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and glory and honor. We thank you tonight, Lord God, for this time in your word. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you, Lord Jesus, is, ah, oh, you are the Lord and the head of our lives, that we surrender ourselves to you and that Jesus, you are the true shepherd, the pastor of this church. I'm just your mouthpiece to hear from you that you may speak to your people tonight through me. And Lord God, I thank you tonight that I give you all the praise and the glory, Lord Jesus. It is my endeavor to only articulate what I hear. Like the Holy Spirit says, he said, I will not speak of myself, but I'll only speak from what I have heard. And Lord Jesus, that is my desire, that I don't speak out of my own um, personal desire and mind, but that I have the mind of Christ, that I speak only as you have spoken to me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Lord Jesus, we thank you right now that we take authority that you have given us as believers to tread over the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil, that we destroy the works of the devil tonight that wants to hinder this word from going forth to produce life and strengthen your people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we forever to give you the praise and give you the glory in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, listen, we want to remind anybody that is watching for the first time, if you're watching us through Facebook Live, uh, you already know that our Facebook address is uh, BLCC Philly. Our Instagram, because we're also on Instagram, our Instagram address is the same thing as our Facebook, uh, BLCC Philly. We have a YouTube page. And you can go to YouTube if you're watching us by, uh, on Facebook, but you want to check us out on YouTube, go to Better Life Christian Center. We're in the Philadelphia area. Um, you can also check us out on YouTube and you can check us out on Twitter. That's right, on Twitter. And I never get that address right, but they're putting it up now at Better Life CC1. Um, I say Twitter. I'm sorry. Um, it is X. It's X. That's right. It's X. I'll keep forgetting the name of it. Um, it's at Better Life CC1. At Better Life CC1. Um, and if you're watching us on YouTube um, for the first time, subscribe to us. Amen. Glory to God. Um, and, and the whole bit. Uh, friend us on 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 our Facebook page. Like us, so forth. We really appreciate it. We'd love to hear from you. All right. Make a comment. Praise God. You can definitely make comments. I see I see most of the comments that you make, but sometimes I don't see them all. So if you made a comment, you're like, why Pastor didn't respond to my question or my comment? Sometimes I don't see all of them, um, depending even because we're on all four of those um, media uh, platforms at simultaneously. We're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're on X, and we're on um, Instagram. So, um, beloved, so we just wanted to share that with you and we want you to share this broadcast. Um, let people know we're on. Amen. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and get into the word of the Lord. And I want you to, uh, turn to 
um, you have your Bibles because we are a Bible teaching church. That's right. We're a Bible teaching. We believe that the word of God is God's uh, uh, word to us is a final authority. And it's all and what's important is that, as the Bible says, my job is to uh, rightly divide the word of truth uh, so that I can um, help you to uh, make it applicable to your life. Amen. So we're, we're, we're not about, you know, just, you know, trying to be inspiring and motivational and those great, those things are fine. But we want to teach you the word of God because it's God's word, glory to God, that is going to sustain your life, your walk in Christ. Amen. All right. So in uh, Luke chapter 15, Luke chapter 15, and some of us know this story, but, uh, you know, as always, God always has something to say to us about this. <clears throat> in Luke 15, I, there are some things we're going to look at the entire chapter because there's some things that the Lord wants to speak to us about this. Um, there are actually, I'll say two, probably you can say three parables, but they all connect to each other. The first one um, Jesus told, uh, because the Pharisees in verse number two, the Pharisees and the scribes, as they normally do, were complaining and, and muttering about Jesus and saying, this man accepts and welcomes sinners and eats with them. Okay. And so they, they were talking about, they were complaining how Jesus ate with the sinners. That's right. Jesus ate with the sinners. That's right. The folk who was sinning and doing all kinds of foolishness, Jesus was having he was eating with them. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it was interesting. Somebody was telling me today, they, uh, the other day, they said, well, you know, I think that, um, you know, certain p pastors and preachers, I'm not going to get in names, shouldn't have taken pictures with secular folks or whatever. And I, I thought about this. I said, if Jesus was alive, he would be taking pictures and eating with some of the worst groups of people. He would. And people would be like, is that Jesus? You know, I, I knew he wasn't right. I, I, I thought as as us believers, we're supposed to be helping people, even the worst of us. I thought that's what the I thought that's what the word said, but I don't know. You know, that's what the word says. So, um, isn't it interesting? Because you know, people talked about a month, few months ago, one particular pastor was taking a picture with somebody that they were like, they shouldn't have taken a picture with. Listen. If I had the opportunity to meet with anybody, if I met with Bill Cosby, well, so what? Okay, listen, all have sinned, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay, anyway, um, so they were complaining about it. So Jesus started giving this parable and uh, he says, and um, Luke chapter 15, verse number four, he says, what man among you, if he has a hundred sheep and lost one of them, does not leave the ninety and the nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is, is lost, searching until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he gets home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and saying to them, rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. And Jesus says, I tell you, in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than the 199 righteous people who have no need of repentance. That's what he said. Then he goes on and he doesn't leave it there. He tells them another parable. And he says, a what woman, if she had 10 silver coins, each one equal to a day's wages, loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the whole house, searching carefully until she finds it. Notice there's a theme here that the shepherd who loses the one sheep, this woman who has, now notice uh, the shepherd who loses one sheep has a hundred of them and it just loses one. 
The woman who has 10 silver coins which equals one day's wages, she just loses one. And he says here, in both cases, they will search for the one that they lost. It says this woman who finds it will call her friends and her neighbors saying, rejoice with me because I found my lost coin. And he says, in the same way, I tell you, there's joy in the presence of the angels of God, even over one sinner who repents. Now, here's what I want to talk to you tonight about. The value of one. The value of one. <laughs> I'm talking about this. Mm. <clears throat> Because when I talk about the value of one, notice that in each parable, the shepherd and the woman, look how much value that they put over one, over one sheep, over one coin. Look at the value. We stop everything to search and define the one. And, and, and truly, as the Spirit of God ministered to me this, today, showing me the value that he places on the one and how we devalue the one. It made me think of this parable that I just I just can't get away from, the parable of the talents. The parable of the talents is, just to remind you, is a man who is wealthy, who owns a company, a business, and so forth, and he takes his three, I feel, best employees on a journey. And he takes them out into a whole nother area where he doesn't, where he doesn't have a business. Where he actually, what it is, is that this man wants to expand his business. So he takes these three employees and who have work with him who has seen how he what the uh the what they do as a, as a business how he operates and so forth and he takes them on this journey and he says i'm going to dispense to you each one of you a certain amount of talents really talents in this case in that scripture is money and he says i'm going to give one three another two but I'm going to give the third one one. The two, when he, after a long period of time, the man comes back and he says, hey, let me see what you've done. Have you done some business? Have you helped to expand our vision, our corporation, our company, our kingdom? Our, have you helped to do this? And the one, the, the one with the, uh, the three says, hey, I did such and such. The one with the two said, hey, look, look, Lord, I did such and such. Um, and the one with the one did nothing. Matter of fact, he didn't lose it, but he didn't increase it. And his response to his boss, I know you to be a hard man. And because you're a hard person, I don't want to lose the one so I dug a hole and I put it in the ground. The man said, well, if you knew that I wanted a return, why didn't you at least put it in the bank? So he gained interest. Now, see, here's, here's, here's what, what, what I'm going to connect it to. See, what it was is that this man, unlike 
the shepherd and the woman didn't value the one. See, he looked at it from a perspective of, I only have one. Where the two of the individuals looked at it from a perspective of, I can't even lose one. Do y'all see that? Do you see? The one looks at it as, I only have one. But the other two says, mm, I can't lose the one. See, beloved, it's, it's, it's what I want you to understand and what I believe the Holy Spirit wants me to show you is the value of just one. See, most of us think we don't have enough. We always are thinking, I don't have enough. I don't have enough. I only got one. There's only one of me. What can I do? And I thought it was interesting. You know what I thought was interesting is that um, that how uh, Jesus in the parable is talking about a woman and a man. The shepherd is the man, the woman, and how he, because he wants us to understand something that, first of all, that it doesn't take a whole lot of somebodies. All it takes is one. Because there's so much value in the one that many times we forget how valuable one is. There's a scripture that talks about despise not small beginnings. Because we think that one doesn't matter. One, how's one important? Because what you don't understand how God looks at the one is that it all it takes is one to bring about change, to bring about growth. All it takes is one. <laughs> because in the one has what it needs to do to bring about increase. Uh, can I show y'all something tonight? Oh, I, I hope I got some thinking people tonight. I really do. I just hope. I hope I got some thinking people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope I got some thinking folk. Mm. See, let me show you something. Turn to Genesis chapter chapter one. Go to Genesis, 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 Genesis one. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Oh, here in the book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it, here's the thing, and people miss this. I try to, I, I try to teach this to people, and they try to make it. People try. You're gonna see what I'm talking about. People will try to complex, make this complex, because they don't see the value of one. And so it says here. It says here. Um, verse number, yeah, okay, verse number 26. And verse 26 says, then God said, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, not physical, but spiritual person, um, personality and moral likeness, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth, and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image and likeness of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. 
and God blessed them, granting them certain authority and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and, sub and subjugate it, putting it under the power and the rule over dominion and fish of the sea and the birds of the air and every living thing that moves upon the earth. So let me stop you for a minute. The Bible says that God said, God said, uh, let, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Let us make man, let us make man, let us make man. Notice when God said we're going to make man, he's, he calls man one, male and female, one. He said man is one like us, like who? Like God. See, because, you know, people, people will say this, you serve three gods, you serve three gods. No, there's one God. Because God made us like him, like him. Well, that's what, we're, we're like him because we're spirit. Yes, but we're like him because it's one of us. It's one. One. Wait a minute. How are you, you saying one? Well, isn't there male and female? Yes. But here's, here's the clarification. Here's how he shows us. Watch this. Turn to Genesis chapter 2. Look at Genesis 2. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ah, excuse me. So it says here in verse number seven, then the Lord God formed, that is created the body of the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being, an individual complete in body and spirit. Oh, so God made man. He formed our bodies. He breathed in our nostrils and we became alive. We became another spirit. Mm. We became another spirit. Oh. Well, wait a minute, Pastor. I thought he's I thought he made male and female. He did. See, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. He made male and female because he made man one. He didn't make man two, he made him one. Well, okay, wait a minute, Pastor. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But th there was somebody else named Eve. Yes. But where did Eve actually come from? Where does she come from? It tells us where Eve actually came from. Here again, here where she comes from. In Genesis chapter 2, verse number 21. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and while he slept, he took one of his ribs and closed them up. Oh, wait a minute. So the woman came from Adam. Now, I want to show you something. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And while he slept, he took the one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place. And the rib, which the Lord God had formed from the man he made, fashioned, formed into a woman. And he brought her and presented her to the man. And he says, this now is the bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. And it says, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and shall become one, one flesh. And, and the man and his wife were both naked and were uh, not ashamed and embarrassed. So watch this. Now, I want to show you something that I never I realized before. Do you notice that when God pulled the woman out of Adam, he brought the woman to Adam. Did you notice something here that I never realized before? God didn't breathe into her. See, you remember he formed Adam. He formed man in verse number seven. 
and man, his body was lifeless until he breathed into his nostrils and he became another speaking spirit. So why didn't he do that when he pulled Eve out? See, because when he breathed into Adam's nostrils, he breathed into Adam the same ability, ability that God has is to reproduce himself after himself. See, he didn't have to breathe into Eve's nostrils because he pulled Eve out of Adam and Eve was already another spirit. Why does God want me to show you this tonight? See, because that's why the one is valuable. Because you think everything you need is outside of you when it's already in you. Oh, glory to God. Y'all, y'all, y'all got to call somebody. I'm telling you, I'm on fire right now. See, you think everything you need. See, this is what we be thinking. If I could just have it. If this could come to me, and that could come to me, and this could come to me, <laughs> when God has already put it on the inside of you. Ooh, ooh, glory to God. Ooh. He already put it inside you. It's in the one. That's why the one is so valuable. Because all you need is just one. Because when you have one idea, it can turn everything around in your life. Mm. One word mm, can make a difference. It, and it can literally take you from poverty to prosperity. Mm. See? See, because everything you really need is already on the inside of you. It's inside you. It really is. Mm. Mm. It's already inside. Mm. We always looking out outwardly. Like, where that? Where that? Where that? Wait, I didn't need when it's already down on the inside of you. You see? See, the shepherd, he go and look for the one. The woman, she goes and looks for the one coin. See, because one can become two, and two can become three, and three can become four. <laughs> See, we, we don't catch that because we don't value one. We always think we need a crowd. You just need one. Mm. We don't put value on one dollar. That's why we can't value fifty dollars or a hundred dollars, because we don't find the strength or the understanding and the wisdom behind just the one dollar. Because we think we don't. Have enough. Glory to God. Let me, let me, let me, let me say this. That's why so many people have a poverty spirit. See, the poverty spirit starts with you not thinking it's you are enough. That you, your one is enough. That dollar, that see, the one talent wasn't enough. I'm not enough. This not enough. See, because we place value on amounts. See, success to us is how much we have. To God, that's not how he evaluates value. Mm. 
Value to God is what's in it. What it, what's the ability? What the one, what ability does the one have? That's how God e evaluates your value. It's not how much, it's what one can do. I wish I had a group of people that was that can listen to me. I really do. I wish more people can see because see, we think we think we're successful because of all how much I got. Look how many houses I have. Look how many cars. Look, see, no, God doesn't look at value like that. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't look at value. Value to God is what can the one do. What's in the one? Because the one doesn't have the ability to become two. Does it have the ability to become three and four and five? See, that's how God equates value. Okay, remember the story um, where... Mm. Jesus talks about this seed and he talks about this seed and he says if you have this seed this one seed you, you can do so much with this one seed and you're like well wait a minute how, how can I do so much with this seed because see within the seed the seed itself has, the value is locked in the seed. Mm. Glory to God. See, that's where the value is. It's in the seed. Mm. Good God. Woo! Let me help y'all tonight. See, when the story of when this widow who want to participate in the offering that Jesus was taking up. And Jesus stopped everybody, stopped the whole offering. And he said to the, said to the, everybody there, he said, you see this woman, this widow right here, she gave more than any of you. So people are sitting there shocked. You're like, well, wait a minute. She only gave a half a cent. And I'm, I'm pretty sure people sitting there like, well, you should. They probably got offended. Like, well, you know how much I just gave in that offering? I just gave, uh, you know, $1,000 in this offering. I just gave $100 in this offering. I mean, I just gave, I, I just gave 20, um, to, um, I just gave uh, 20 silver uh, 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 pieces of silver, um, which is worth a, 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 a 20 days worth of, um, um, of salary. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure people get all upset. And, and Jesus said, yeah, yeah, on the night. Okay, yeah, on the night. No, but she gave them more. And they're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, how? Because her seed, what she put in, had more value than all that they did. Why? Because the value is in what it cost her. And he said, she gave more than you all because it was all that she had. And because she gave all that she had, he said the value of what she gave exceeded what they gave. They couldn't put their hands around it. They're like, what? Ah. They said, how is that possible? See, you know why they can't? Just like how you can't put your head around it. Just like the man with the one talent couldn't put his head. Because you see, you measure value in, in how much, but not in what? Watch this. In quality. Elder Carl and I were talking, and he was um 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 telling uh um he was telling he coaches these these he coaches young ladies, and um he was telling the guys, he said, come on, we check, do our workout. They're like, ah, yeah, y'all working out. He said, look, he said, see, you're going to see. He said, see, my workout is not in how much. 
It is in the quality of my workout. Trust me, when you finish my workout, you're going to wish you did more. You're going to wish you ran two miles. See, I might not have you run two miles in my workout, but I'll have you do certain um, uh, uh, wind sprints and so forth that are, are, you run less, but you run harder. See, the see, we always value everything in amounts and not in its quant in its quality. It's quality. We measure it quantity and not quality. Because quality has to do with what it can become. Let me show you something. Uh, let's go back over to Luke chapter 15. Let me show you this. Luke 15. Hmm. I'm running out of time. Mm. Excuse me. So then Jesus talks about um, a certain man had two sons. And uh, the younger of them said to the father, hey, give me the share of the property. And it falls to me. So he divided the estate between them. And a few days later, the young man gathered together all, everything that he had, and he traveled out. In other words, he rolled out after his dad gave him his inheritance. And it's funny, I thought it was interesting. He didn't even really say anything to his family. He just rolled out. The, the few days later, he got all the stuff together and said, I'm out. <laughs> and he said, I'm out. And he goes out to a distant um, uh, country. And over time, I mean, he just was reckless and spent everything he owned. And then what made it bad, a famine came, a severe famine occurred, and he really was in need. And it got so bad for him that he didn't have anything that he was forced, it says, himself on one of his citizens of the country and who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. And he was so, he, he was, he, he, the Bible says in verse number 60, he would have gladly eaten the food that pigs ate, but they could not satisfy his hunger. And no one was giving anything to him. But when he finally came to his senses, he says, wait a minute, what am I doing here? He says, look, in my father's house, there are enough food. And he says, while I'm dying here of hunger. I will get up, go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son, but treat me like one of your hired men. And the Bible says here, he got up, he came to his father, but while he was still along off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion, and man ran and hugged him and loved on him. And then he called his, the father called the servant and said, listen, man, we're going to have a party. He said, kill the fattest calf, get this young man a robe, put a ring on him, the whole nine, and we're going to celebrate him. And, and so the, the older son, he gets jealous, he gets upset and not excited that his son and his brother came back. He's like, he said, look, I've been here. I've been serving you the whole nine. Now, see, my here's my focus is going back to the one. Hmm. Why did the father get so excited? Well, yes, that's that's his son. Mm. Mm. That's his son. And, and, but he got excited because notice, again, is celebrating the one. He came back home, one, because he's putting value. See, he's putting value. He didn't he didn't he didn't discount his oldest son, but he he's he's counting the value of his son who came back. He's like, oh, my son came back. That I didn't lose one of my sons. I got both of my sons back in the house. It had to do with value, beloved. It had to do with value. 
See, and the older brother couldn't say that your, your brother's back. It, we, we, I didn't lose not one because he valued both of them at the same amount. He's like, I don't want to lose either one because there's so much value in both of my sons. And they both came back into the house. It had to do with their value. See, because somebody can say, well, he ran off, he chose, he ran, he left, da, 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 da. At least I got my older son here, and I'm going to just praise my older son. I ain't going to worry about it. No, because see, it had to do with the value of the woman. And, and what I want you to understand tonight, listen, that, that God values each and every last one of us. Here's the awesome part. Do you know God doesn't want to lose not one of his children, not one of his sons and his daughters? He doesn't want to lose not one of us to go to hell. Even though there're going to be many of us because it's it's our choice. But it is his, it is his endeavor not to lose one because of the value That's how much value we are to him. What's interesting to me is that we don't put that kind of value on each other. See, we don't value one another. That's why there is racism. That's why there is sexism. That's why there is all of these isms because we don't value one another. Because what we what we don't what we don't understand is that every every watch this every solution to every problem is already walking on the planet. What 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 did he just say? Every solution to every problem is here, is locked in the people that we don't value, the ones. That's why, why in, in civilizations all over this world, we got caste systems. They're the lowest, we're the highest. See, that's the trick of the devil. Satan loves to say, see, these people are barbarians. These people are animals so that you don't value them. Because in each one of us, there are solutions. We carry the solutions of every problem that we have on the planet. But what we do as human beings, we devalue people. We devalue the one. Not understanding that the one person that you may be beating down, that you may be kicking, that you may be cursing and discounting has the cure for the disease that can save your family. Who glory to God. Not catching the understanding and the revelation. That the person that you despise has the solutions to a life problem. Because we don't see it that way. Because we don't value the one. <laughs> we don't value. We don't even value ourselves. Because we'll say, well, what can one person do? How can one person have a voice? How can I, one person change this situation? See, we discount ourselves. Mm. Which I believe is why many of us are broken, poor, discouraged, because we don't see the value that God put on the inside of us. 
Let me prophesy to you tonight. Every person has tremendous value. I'm talking multi millions, billions of value, billions of dollars. It's locked on the inside. Just like that seed that Jesus talks about, the value of that seed is locked and it has to be unlocked. It has to be planted. It has to be put in the right soil. Soil. It has to be cultivated. It has to be watered so that the value of the one comes forth. But the value is down on the inside of you. What we need is not outward, it's inward. See, because when God created us, he created us one. And he just pulled out of us what we need. Where do your children come from? They come from the one that gets pulled out of you. <laughs> they don't come from the stalk, right? They come out of us. See, and God wanted to show us. He said, see, you looking, you looking out here, you're going. Wait, wait. And I see that the, the one is down on the inside of you. It's right there. We're out of time. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you the glory and the honor tonight. Father God, I thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ and I thank you for his word. I thank you, Jesus, that you, I'm honored that you use, that I availed myself, that you may be able to utilize me as a tool, as your mouthpiece. I thank you tonight that I was able to dispense wisdom, insight tonight, faith in the lives of your people. I pray, Lord Jesus, that by the Holy Spirit, that you take this word and that you help somebody, that someone tonight, someone may come across this broadcast and understand that how valuable they are. And whomever may have rejected them may be a family member, someone in their community, someone in their extended family, but to know that you did not reject them and that they have tremendous, unlimited value. That in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that they do not devalue themselves and think they are not, they are worthless and unimportant. I pray tonight that by the Holy Spirit, that people who need to know hmm, that they have worth, great worth, is down on the inside of them. That the one, that they, that one is as important as any other ones all over this planet. I pray tonight, Lord Jesus, that I come against that spirit of, of low self-esteem and devouring, that spirit of depression tonight. I pray tonight, Lord Jesus, that the people, that the people that listen to me, that the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you value them. 
will come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Minister to your people tonight. I thank you, Lord Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, that even though we're through the airwaves, that as the Bible says, the Holy Spirit is as when it goes, whether it goes in places we don't always know or how it goes or how it comes, but that the Spirit of God will move through this broadcast in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we give you the praise and we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, beloved, we hope you were blessed by this word tonight. We pray tonight that we completed our assignment. And um, we thank the Lord tonight for this time in God's word. And we just praise God for you that tuned in. And I just pray that people, <clears throat> others will come upon this broadcast and need to hear this word. They need to hear deliverance tonight. To know that you truly value us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, beloved, let's get our tithes and our offerings together um, to sow your seed tonight. Um, if you've um, been blessed by this word, this word has ministered to you and, and so forth, we ask you tonight to uh, sow into our ministry so a financial gift into this ministry, um, um, if this word has fed you, um, if you would, you can um, give uh, through uh, through our through virtual means through Cash App and Venmo and PayPal. If you want to uh, sow tonight through our Cash App, um, go to uh, Cash App and and our uh, <clears throat> address for our cash app is uh, dollar sign better, all one word, dollar sign better, LCC21. Um, if uh, you have the app Venmo, go to Venmo and look for Better Life Christian Center. And if you want to do PayPal, uh, go to our website. Our website is all one word, better life Philly, the dot org. And when you get to the home page, just right at the top, look for donations and click that, and that'll take you to our PayPal account. So um, if you would, um, if you're doing your tithes, you already know your tithes is 10%, and you get your offering together, and um, we want to pray. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory and praise and honor. We thank you, Lord Jesus, right now that we receive the tithes tonight. We thank you, Lord God, as uh this part of uh your vineyard um and your house tonight that they we are praying for the tithes to come in that they may be meet in your house and we thank you tonight that as the tide is is given tonight is paid we thank you right now lord jesus glory to god hallelujah we pray as your servant as your anointed servant as even as the melchizedek prayed that the blessing be um, truly be uh, uh, released over the lives of those who are tied this tonight in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor tonight for every offering that is given and sown. Father God, we thank you that we pray that that offering is given with the right attitude that's given cheerfully. And we thank you, Lord God, for the favor and the blessing of the Lord be upon them and come to them in abundance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we're forever to give you the praise and give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Will you go ahead and give? Praise God. We thank you for your giving in advance. And we just praise the Lord for that. Hey, listen, we thank God for you tonight. Hey, don't forget, we're going to have prayer for Good Friday at our location at 587 Bethlehem Pike at um, um, Montgomeryville, PA. Uh, our prayer time is starting at seven o'clock. And um, beloved, uh, listen, we want you to come out and be a part of that with us, okay? Um, so uh, 7 p.m., we're gonna be do uh, communion on that Friday uh, for Good Friday, recognizing Good Friday. 
and now come on and be a part of that. Also, Sunday, which is Easter, our resurrection service, we're going to have a great time. We're going to have some special things that are going on, um, and um, we want you to come out at 10 a.m. and be with us for um, the our Easter Sunday, our resurrection service. All right, beloved? Hey, we thank and praise the Lord for you. We hope you were blessed by this word, and we just thank God for you tonight. And um, listen, glory to God, hallelujah. Uh, we'll hopefully see you this Friday and or Sunday, and um, you have a blessed rest of the week. All right, God bless. Mm-hmm.